Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q3 FI22 earnings conference call of Pirvi Specialty Chemicals Limited hosted by Asian Market Securities Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference has been recorded. Disclaimer, this conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company which are based on beliefs, opinion, and expectation of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. Actual results may differ from such expectation, projection, etc., whether expressed or implied. Participants are requested to exercise caution while referring to such statements and remarks. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Saurabh Kapadia from Asian Market Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of Asian Market Securities, I would like to welcome you all for 3Q FI22 Earnings Conference Call of Previous Specialty Chemical Limited. From the management, we have with us Mr. Narayan Ayer, Chief Finance Officer of, of the company. We shall start the call with opening remarks from the management, and then we will move to Q&A session. I now hand over the call to Mr. Ayer for his opening remark. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Saurabh, and uh, good evening to all my fellow investors and uh, shareholders of uh, previous Specialty Chemicals Limited. A very, very warm welcome on a possibly a chilly uh, a weekend uh, evening. I know I'm uh, at the threshold of the weekend and spoiling your weekend by maybe an hour or so, but uh, it's important that I stay connected Previous stays connected to its very fond investors, and on that count, I can only say that uh, the quarter that has gone by, uh, October to December, was a very decent quarter. It was a comeback quarter for uh, Previ, uh, post uh, a little bit of natural calamity that was a setback in uh, July 2021, 21st, 22nd, and 23rd July. The entire uh, Kokan area, including Mahad, where previous major facilities are located, was inundated by water, and it was about 8 to 10 feet of water inside the factory. And the factory had to be shut down for almost about uh, three weeks or so. We were the first ones to restart the factory and come back. And as we did in the past, uh, when there was a fire in our factory in 2018, we rose from the ashes like a phoenix. So this time, you know, we just like uh, flying off like a seagull, maybe from the water up, uh, you know, coming out and uh, performing to the best of our abilities. And uh, uh, we're back with a, with a very, very uh, uh, decent uh, uh, run rate, I will say that, uh, to get, achieve our uh, targeted goal, the wish list that we have, and move towards the overall ambition of first achieving uh, the, this year's targets and then you know go over to the 3000 crore mark. Quarter, uh, uh, this quarter there were a little bit of setbacks on account as it's known in the industry because of the increase in the RMC across board. Most of the RMC costs like uh, the acids, the solvents, the tollins, including of course the coal cost, all this had gone up substantially on account of heavy shortages, uh, materials not being available from China and from other uh, uh, countries. And of course, uh, the uh, sporadic freight uh, expenses or the freight costs just keeping on on. But I could say that, you know, this was all uh, to some extent uh, arrested by Privy and the financial numbers that are there and it's there uh, uh, in your hands and all, uh, already displayed. We've been able to offset most of this uh, increase in the expenses on account of uh, yield improvements, process improvements, technical uh, upgrades that uh, we had undertaken in the last uh, two or three years, uh, spending a lot of capex, uh, some cost-cutting, uh, energy-saving measures, uh, also uh, undertaking some uh, 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 reverse power or the co-generation that we have also created within uh, our own factory. All this helped us to tide this unprecedented rise in the input cost 
and uh, broadly i could say that you know we were able to address most of the increase in the so called input costs by uh, the uh, in house measures that we have taken around uh, 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 there has been definitely an increase on a quarter on quarter numbers as you would also uh, uh, you know appreciate uh, uh, the uh, the efforts that uh, the company has been able to put in around and uh, turn and give a, a decent i could say uh, a sort of a, a performance uh, and i hope most of the investors uh, have not found many surprises in the results uh, because there is an increase in the turnover by almost about 30% as you compare to the immediate september quarter and the december quarter but i will say that you know a better comparison will be the december 20 and december 21 quarter where uh, our sales has increased by almost about another 30 or percent the uh, uh, profit has increased from about 25 and a half crores on december 20 uh, we we come down up to about close to 35% which in, once again signifies a 40% increase in the uh, profitability numbers and uh, there has been an exceptional item as you know that some of the expenses on account of flood is being uh, considered by us as exception uh, 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 so in this quarter there has been an addition of about 2 2.12 crores uh, uh, so uh, coupled with the uh, total expenses of 17 and a half crores 10 crores of money we have already received from the insurance company so there is a 7.36 crores as an exceptional uh, uh, loss i could say that but it is only time uh, uh, you know uh, in this quarter we expect the entire money uh, from the insurance company on account of uh, the expenditure and the losses uh, the uh, the business interruption losses that was there we are uh, fairly uh, uh, confident that uh, the entire money uh, uh, to privy should be there and it should appear in our financials by march so on this note uh, uh, and some of our projects uh, uh, which uh, has been also the highlight that we have embarked upon a very uh, you know ambitious 500 crore projects on three main products trionel uh, i'm happy to say and uh, inform the investors that we have uh, commissioned trionel as a project at our mahad unit 7 and this was uh, commissioned on 31st of december and uh, in the month of january now uh, you know uh, the trionel production has started and very happy to say that it was on uh, uh, the 14th of january or i could say the day of uttarayan that the first invoice for prianil was also billed to one of our esteemed customers uh, uh, and uh, so that's that's something which is there yes uh, the spot business market is something that we will tap around before we are in a position to get into the uh, uh, contractual business and the other two projects uh, the camphor as well as the galaxy mask is very much uh, on track and we expect that by march uh, most of these uh, other major uh, uh, projects should also be capitalized and they will start uh, bringing in revenues from the first quarter of 2223 so based on that so this is my introduction remark i'm sticking now currently only to the quarterly performance i'm open for any questions any suggestions from the investors and from you all Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Amar Moria from Alpha Accurate Advisors please go ahead Yeah so thanks a lot for the opportunity uh, so couple of clarifications uh, firstly sir um, uh, on the uh, ongoing capex you had elaborated that you know Pioneer has already commissioned and Galaxy Mars and Camper will come by March so uh, is it fair to assume like this whole capacity will be largely available for the spot and or we'll be getting some benefit of the contractual also uh can i answer you amar yeah yeah please uh, thank you and uh, uh, uh basically see galaxy mask and camphor are huge volume products so okay. uh prima facie we will be in a position to sell only in the spots from april to june uh, okay. some of our customers they prima facie also you know uh, uh tender some uh, uh 
ask for some tenders to be floated for their second half requirements. Okay. Uh, so we could possibly participate in some of these customers' second half requirements. But the bulk volume, definitely when we talk about, you know, my top 25 customers who are global players. Uh, so these two, uh, t out of this top 25, almost about 10 to 12 of them, they go in for annual contracts. So I have, uh, definitely I will not be able to get such volumes as we normally undertake for all our other products. So that's a bus that we have missed, but uh, you know uh, the uh, delay was uh, beyond our control and beyond our measures on account of the second wave and uh, you know uh, the oxygen supply is not being made available by government of India and respective state governments also because it had to be given a preference to the uh, COVID patients, and then you had an onslaught of the third wave coming in, price escalations. So all this led together, uh, there has been a delay. You can uh, prima facie say that you know for the next uh, uh, nine months or the first nine months of the next year, we will be in a position to sell a maximum on our existing products, and uh, to some extent uh, from these three new products uh, which will come about. In fact, yeah. okay. So, so, so for the next full year uh, for this whole three capacities, should we expect at least uh, 20, 30 percent, 40 percent kind of utilization level? Mm. For the entire year of 22-23, you are talking about? Uh, yeah, sir. FY23 whole year. I think with the uh, preview, uh, you know, yes, uh, we could even uh, stretch ourselves to about 40% of our overall capacities, if okay. it's possible, in fact. Okay. And secondly, sir, this is my second question. Secondly, sir, uh, the capacity which we had actually commissioned in FY21, and the benefit of which, like, you know, kind of 800 crores, 2,000 crore benefit was expected to come uh, going forward. So we'll be seeing the majority of the benefit in the FY23. And how much we had seen of that particular expanded capacity benefit in FY22? FY22 is still on. So, uh, you know, uh, definitely there has been an increase in the volume by about uh, uh, close to three, three and a half percent, three and a half percent. Of course, we lost uh, some volume because uh, a month of sale was lost on account of the flood. So, you know, I was not in a position to function itself. Otherwise, definitely we would have been able to achieve all the volumes uh, uh, with regard to the main pine-based products uh, uh, because that was something which was fully uh, being sold uh, to the capacity that we had because these capacities were all uh, put to use by 31st of uh, December 2020 and we had contracts in place and it, uh, it was going around. Uh, I will say that, you know, uh, as far as the main pine products are concerned, yes, my factory today is running into full capacities. As far as the specialty chemicals is uh, there, specialty chemicals is just about looking to uh, you know uh, uh, get the demand uh, uh, in bits and pieces uh, uh, from and specialty chemicals is something which is used in high-ended cosmetics and perfumes mm -hmm. and all other applications. Uh, 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 broadly, uh, from the market uh, uh, sentiments, I feel that uh, this sh uh, should come into a full play. Uh, somewhere from around April or May, and more so from the uh, period of uh, July onwards when actually people start using, and there is summer across uh, globally, uh, people will start using more and more of these high-ended uh, uh, you know, specialty chemicals. And we also expect the global uh, uh, offices and commercial establishments all to start uh, maybe, you know, post this uh, endemic as it is now looking like, you know, to, so people will start moving, travel around the world and all, uh, more for, so from the Q2 of 22-23. Uh, so we can expect specialty chemicals demand to also move up, uh, more so from uh, August and September of 2022. Uh, then uh, the capacities on account of the speciality and citral will also go up. So I am very, uh, uh, rather uh, rather than using a word I, we at Previ are very, very confident that the pine space will be fully utilized, 100% uh, capacity. Maybe it could also go to 102, 103% if we are in a position to maintain our, uh, uh, our factories to the core. Uh, the specialty chemicals could be somewhere around 70-75% of its utilization of its capacities that could be there. 
uh, the mm -hmm. uh, the phenol space will be 100% sold out. It's already 100% sold out. I can say that, you know. And uh, uh, and the last but not the least phase is uh, pine has always been our forte. So uh, if I had to cumulatively average it out, we will be something around uh, I could say about 85 to 90 percent of our overall utilization of the capacities that were there before these three new products come in. And lastly, sir, uh, in terms of the EBITDA margin, like, you know, as you indicated, this is largely because of the RM inflation and other manufacturing costs are, are at elevated level. So any solace we are expecting from, let's say, fourth quarter or the first quarter, uh, so when we can see the bounce back in the margin and reaching to our guided level of around, you know, 15 to 16% kind of thing. Okay. No, no, we will be back. Uh, uh, currently, also, we are at about something like 15.5%. And, and as I keep telling all of you investors, the forex income that you see in previous balance sheet is not any derivative or a hedge uh, gain. It is prima facie uh, uh, a fluctuation in the timing differences of my uh, sales and purchases and the realization that it happens upon. It's an purely an uh, India's accounting entry. And all this is coming and uh, from my main flow of uh, business operations, which is uh, sales and exports and possibly purchases and imports. Uh, to give uh, my investors a very happy news on this uh, evening, uh, uh, the additional uh, uh, percentages or additional margins will definitely set in right from 1st of January 2022 because the contracts that we have entered for calendar year 2022 with most of my global players are higher than what it was in the year 2021. So that's a, that's a good news that some of these uh, increased expenses on account of the input of RMC as well as the increased freight costs you know, uh, uh, will be met uh, on account of the higher uh, contractual values or higher sales value that we will obtain uh, from our customers uh, going forward in this year. And the increase is anywhere on an average between 5 to 8% uh, as compared to the 21 prices that we had uh, gotten in fact. So that's a, a very good news and the bounce back you could see in this quarter itself in fact. You know. Right now also whatever I'm selling is with a bounce back uh, version in fact. Thank you sir. Thanks a lot sir. Thank you. Amma. Thank you for your questions. Yes. Pleasure talking to you. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nakshita Mehta from Credent Asset Management Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening and uh, thank you for, you know, giving this opportunity and uh, congratulations on a fantastic set of numbers. Uh, thank you. I, thank you very I, much, Lakshita. Yeah, so my one uh, question is again, you know, the RM cost has, compared to last quarter, has gone up by, you know, as much as 47%. And uh, if you compare it to the corresponding year quarter, it's gone up by 25-26%. But still, you know, the margins are uh, probably relatively at the same level. So I want to know what measures you took to, you know, preserve the margin. Any, any, any special measures? Okay. Uh, uh, like I really do not know how you got a 45% or a 70% uh, on an RMC, which is a growth. You also will have to see a threshold uh, because, you know, when you are looking at a cost of materials consumed, the right. changes on account of the inventory will also be forming a part of it. And percentage-wise, uh, to give you the exact numbers, you know, because just uh, my board meeting has got over and we were uh, deliberating yeah. about it with the auditors. So there is an increase, overall increase, if I had to uh, uh, give a very, very uh, uh, fair and rational view. The growth or the increased RMC expenditure only for this quarter, uh, as compared to the uh, previous quarters, has been about something close to 6.78%. If you compare it with the earlier uh, overall nine-month period, if I say, uh, so the increase has been about close to 0.5%. So that means on a 1,000 crore of sale, a 0.5% increase is uh, what has uh, uh, transpired. But if you only look for the quarter of December vis-a-vis -vis the quarter of September, or more so the quarter of June, there is an additional 6.74% of RMC increase. You know. So this increase, uh, uh, prima facie, is on account of the unprecedented uh, increase in the RMC cost. Like I'm just going to narrate a few examples. 
uh, acetic anhydride, which is a very important ingredient for us, what we used to buy it for about say 70 rupees and 90 rupees or so, is now currently being was being bought in this particular period, closer to upwards of 200 and all. It's come back now to about 150 or 160, and we expect it to further come down. Similarly, uh, uh, some of the other solvents, uh, phosphoric acid, uh, sulfuric acid, all are were being sold at a very very all time high, and these are all chemicals which we use in bulk volume and this is what actually actually has uh, affected my uh, uh, rmc inputs in fact you know so some of the spot market higher prices that we were getting on the sales uh, uh, has actually helped us uh, you know uh, uh, sail through uh, this quarter and yet manage the overall margins uh, when we talk about on a, a sustainable basis in fact Mm. The, uh, the measures that we have taken is that we have uh, you know, started reusing some of these acids uh, uh, by recovering these acids and reusing it. So reducing the overall uh, 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 usage of uh, maybe a, uh, an acetic acid, a sulfuric acid reuse plant has been there. In fact, phosphoric acid is being reused by us. So that's how we are trying to curtail on some of these unwanted uh, uh, expenses where we can do a recovery. And secondly, our R&D, where we are, our strength is our R&D, as my uh, uh, chairman and managing director always says, you know. So the R&D has been able to come about with a new technical ideas, new process innovations in manufacturing my main key products, in fact. And my main key products are five of them. That is basically the dihydromacinol, the amberflow, pine oil, terpinol, and terpin for all the So all of these, there has been constant innovations in ensuring that how do we reduce our input costs, how to improve the yield, how we can you know, remove some of the unwanted chemicals that come into it so that by using these uh, acids and solvents, you, know, you burn some of the uh, natural raw material like the pine. So by using a natural supplement like a resin or reusing some of these assets, we are able to yeah. recover the input cost. And that's how we've been able to improve the yield. Uh, prima facie, getting a final product percentage better than what it was in the uh, earlier quarters, or earlier yeah. period. And that's how uh, uh, you see that our margins uh, have been, you know, we've been able to sustain and maintain the margins, or almost try to maintain the margins that we were uh, achieving. And we are confident that now with the you know the increase in the uh, selling prices, our margins definitely will go up uh, uh, starting from this quarter itself. And as all of you investors know that you know uh, Privy always is like an MS Dhoni. Uh, the first three quarters could be slow, but the fourth quarter always is a big bang for us, and we expect this quarter also to be a big bang. In fact. That's that's very insightful. Thank you. Uh, my another question is on the debt. Um, so in your presentation, I saw that there is, you know, uh, heavy yeah, debt. Okay. Uh, long term right. and, so just yeah. to inform all investors, I, you know, we just uploaded a investor presentation. Sorry, I was delayed uh, in, uh, uh, you know, uh, sending this uh, across to all of you. I don't know how many of you have been able to go through it, but I was tied up post the board meeting yesterday with some other work, and uh, so you all can see that uh, and this. Uh, uh, presentation also has the debt portion. Yes, uh, you you can continue with the question. Yes, uh, yes. Sorry to interrupt, uh, Miss Mehta. May we request you that you return to the question queue for follow up questions? Um, yeah, but this is my second question. Can I just complete this one? Then I will uh, go back to the queue. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I wanted to ask that the debt on both uh, you know long term and short term, uh, current and long term debt are pretty huge. So is there any uh, reason as in uh, why are they, both of them are so? Yes, yeah, so the long term was already approved. It was only that we had not availed it at uh, one go. You know, as the projects uh, uh, kept on uh, moving around, we were drawing those long term borrowings uh, uh, prima facie from the banks. And it was also uh, uh, that a part of our own earnings we were to you know deploy back into the capex so the overall capex is about uh, 550 crores out of which the borrowing that we had done in the last 3 3 years or so has been only to the extent of uh, 250 plus 56 306 crores or so so the the delta is the profit that the company earned mm -hmm. and most keeping it for the dividend as well as for working capital 
the balance has to be had to be utilized uh, into the uh, capex so that's why that you see that the uh, borrowings or the debt looks to be on a higher side however uh, uh, having said this uh, the uh, the new capex uh, the new projects once it sets out and we start earning the revenue from that your your debt position will uh, come down because you are uh, looking at a higher sales which means higher collections and uh, possibly reducing the overall borrowing or the working capital uh, immediately and uh, uh, the debt uh, the long term debt is basically over a seven year period that we pay off and uh, it will reduce uh, as per the schedule or as per the uh, 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 periods at which we have borrowed from various banks you know so this right. is a temporary phenomenon that you could possibly see uh, that there is a higher debt in fact and maybe you know for the very first time that overall debt uh, has just uh, edged past my overall uh, uh, equity or the debt worth of the company but it's a temporary phenomenon not to worry about and as okay. i said if this is going to be a bumper quarter for us you know you'll you'll see that previous performance uh, in march is going to be a much uh, di uh, different scenario as compared to what you are possibly seeing now in december yeah that we're confident of okay just one follow up on this one can you can can you tell us on one what maturity schedule is the is the debt on i mean how many years are still left to pay off not every loan has been taken for a, a period of not less than 5 to 7 years so some okay. of the earlier loans that we had taken so that will be repaid as per its schedule so the first of the so called uh, the, and we are paying on quarterly basis because these are all 2 years moratorium or 18 months moratorium uh, okay. with a 5 year quarterly payments to each of the bankers in fact you know so every year i will have a repayment schedule of about 30 to 45 crores going forward for the next 5 years now Okay great great thank you so much thank you so Welcome. much and good luck for your next quarter thank you very much thank you the next question from the line of dushyant mishra from sage one investment please go ahead Button. And I know the last call we mentioned that we're still 15 months from commercialization, but I just want to check if there were some updates regarding that, how the technology transfer was going, if there were any hiccups from the company. Uh, you're trying to talk about Prigiu and the technology transfer? Yeah, especially with Gibbon. Yeah, so that process is ongoing. The technology transfer is happening around. So it's a greenfield process. It is going to be a time-consuming affair. Uh, the uh, land has been acquired. Uh, the uh, uh, we have already uh, made an application to the Environment Commission, or as it is known in India as EC, uh, for the various products that we are going to manufacture uh, uh, in the uh, so-called joint venture with uh, Jivadan at Prijiv. And uh, this we expect uh, uh, could be about close to a eight to ten month affair before finally the Uh, environment commission gives us the approvals for all the products to be manufactured parallelly we have engaged with a basic engineering company uh, firm and uh, uh, an external agency to you know help us design the basic engineering with regard to the layouts and the requirements of the equipment for setting up the projects so this way we are doing it in this 8 month period or 10 month period before finally we get the permission from ec Uh, so that we can start being on onto the field immediately maybe you know just prior to the monsoon or so we can start the excavation work and start doing the civil work so that work is parallelly going around of the set 42 products that uh, jivadan has asked us to work uh, close to about uh, 14 of them have been successfully uh, you know met the standards of jivadan at our r&d scale our research lab have been able to manufacture these 14 products to the uh you know a satisfaction of the jivadan technical team a uh, balance about 10 odd products are in the pipeline at the research and development because you know it's not that i have an r&d that i can you know completely stop uh, uh doing the innovation work for the main parent company and only focus on uh, the 42 products that jivadan wants so it's a uh, section by section in fact and we are doing it and we are confident that this technology transfer what is coming from jivadan to us uh you know will 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 happen uh, in a very synchronized manner and we are no doubts that uh, previ will be in a position to 
manufacture these products to the uh, 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 to the likes of Jivadan themselves in fact. Yeah. That's wonderful to hear. And just a question on our research and development as well. At a time, how many products are we working on? So this is apart from what we're doing with the JV partner. Just on our own self, at a time, what is our what is the pipeline in the research and development? And I'm sure not all of them end up seeing light of the day, but just a ballpark idea. You want to know how many currently uh doing research at both my research labs. Is that what is your question, Dushyan? Yes, that is correct. That is correct. Uh, a difficult question to answer, but close to about 14 to 16 molecules we are working, uh, of which uh, uh, we are fairly, fairly, fairly successful uh, uh, with uh, five or six of them. And... Uh, a couple of them we have already started doing at the pilot level, uh, which is what our uh, chairman in our first of November address to the investors, he happened to say that you know the launch of his most ambitious project, Menthol, that uh, uh, was successful at the research level uh, to crack the menthol, uh, uh, levomenthol uh, biochemistry, you know, uh, to manufacture uh, levomenthol on the most novel. Uh, technia technology, so that's something that so, uh, that we have scaled it up to the pilot level. So uh, this could be about uh, 14, 16 products currently that we are working around. Okay, perfect. And what is our quarterly run rate on research and development expenses? Uh, close to about six and a half crores. Perfect. That's all from my side. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish Uglanavar from InvestQ Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah. I, um, <clears throat> so I just wanted to understand a lot of uh, things are going around as, uh, as far as a lot of activities there as far as PV is concerned. So if you could um, uh, enlighten us about the Jordan uh, tie-up, what is the roadmap for that overall uh, in terms of certain numbers uh, or what are we trying to uh, build here with them and uh, the the main uh, uh, efforts of Privy because uh, what we've been hearing in the last few interactions with the management is uh, we are trying to um, basically over the next four or five years around 300,000 crores of top line and stuff that we've got to know. So if you could just uh, um, help us understand with these aspects how they are working. See the 3,000 crores of number what we have been talking about uh, by us in the last one year or so is are going to be from products manufactured by the main parent company and it doesn't take into cognizance or account uh, something that uh, Prejeev is going to offer because the 3,000 crore number has come in the AGM of uh, 2020 itself and you know that was because we, at that time itself we had uh, embarked upon uh, the capex plan for the three products that we are uh, now you know almost in the final stages so this is what our md had talked about with all this uh, uh, 550 odd crores that you know finally we are going to spend around in uh, finishing and completing the three main projects the backward integration and some of the expansions on the dihydromacinol and the amber floor and the pine oil all this put together will take uh, Privy closer to the uh, 3,000 crore mark. Uh, depending on the price uh, increase, uh, you know, it could be up and down by 10% plus and minus or so, in fact. Uh, as far as Prijeev is concerned or Jivadan's products are concerned, uh, Jivadan continues to be my very uh, important customer to me. Uh, you know, they are al always at the top two or top three customers, and they have been so in the last uh, uh, 10 to 15 years. You know, uh, Jivadan has been very, very important. Uh, why Jivadan has come to us is not because, uh, uh, you know, uh, they want some sort of uh, comfort or so. It's only because, you know, they have seen uh, Privy delivering quality, technically sound products, not just on the bulk volume, but on the specialty chemicals also. And Privy has the capability of uh, turning around um, various, uh, you know, reactions like the Grignard, uh, the pyrolyzing, uh, the uh, the... Uh, the hot air insulations and all that sort of stuff. So we have been very, very good. Technically, it is a proven thing that our products uh, meet to their standards. Second, uh, you know, we are a sustainable uh, company. Uh, having the backward integration into our fold 
we are not left at the vagaries or mercies of the spot market, uh, which is what the Chinese uh, uh, players normally do in the pine space, in fact. You know? So we have a backward integration plan, and we have uh, contracts from various CST mills across the globe, uh, pan, uh, US, the Canada, Scandinavian countries, Russia, all of these uh, countries you know, uh, where there are uh, uh, paper mills and where pine trees are cultivated to obtain the soft wood or uh, craft wood. Uh, we have tie-ups with many of these mills and which where the CST was obtained on a tender basis between anywhere between six months and three years. Uh, some of them are for contracts firm price for a year or year and a half or two. And some could be on an annual basis, the prices differ. So being a sustainable player, uh, completely zero liquid discharge in our unit two and very shortly for all our other units also going to be zero liquid discharge. Our uh, Jagadia unit or the Gujarat unit is already a zero liquid discharge. We are reusing our water. So there is an RO plant in place. There is an MEA. There is an insulator. There is an ESP for the chimney or the coal uh, thing. They feel that we are amongst the top uh, ranked uh, companies following ethical practices in manufacturing chemicals. And that is why they have come to us and looked around and stated you could possibly be partnering us to manufacture some of these low volume, high value products. And uh, you know uh, 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 that's the reason we have entered into a separate JV because they wanted to ensure uh, secrecy with regard to the technology transfer that they are doing for these 40 products, which currently they are manufacturing themselves for their in-house consumption. They don't sell it to anyone else, in fact. You know. So uh, this gives an aperture to prove our credentials that uh, PreV means uh, uh, quality and previous technical capability is none lesser than anyone else in the world. And that's the reason that, and always having a tie-up with the world's largest uh, fragrance company, you know, it's it's a feather on the cap of any Indian company, and that's why we are done, and we have agreed for this uh, uh, JV with uh, uh, Jivadan, uh, you know, which gives us our uh, uh, ability to showcase to the world. Yes, uh, Preview means quality, and Preview means uh, you know, technically a very sound company in fact. Okay, um, a follow up on that basically, this uh, journey from 1200 crores of top line to 3000 crores was the kind of conservative top line that uh, the time frame that we are looking at here, maybe four years or five years. Uh, uh, and we are looking at another point. maybe uh, two and a half to three years. Oh, is it? And uh, what would be the, uh, the JV uh, doing by then, maybe another four years? What significance does that JV bring to us in terms of numbers? She basically yeah. gives some sort of a, 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 you know, a comfort that you know Jivadan will continue to be one of my preferred customers. So uh, most of the profits or most of my volumes with regard to the major products on the pine space, they are my largest uh, consumer. So I also you know uh, retain their share on my growth in those uh, five big products because uh, as we have been saying in all the investor meets and uh, uh, whoever invested have also come and met in you know that we will continue to maintain and retain the share of our volume on the pine space uh, uh, going forward also. If any pine uh, like diatomacinol keeps growing at a 4% on a yearly basis, which means we are talking that from a 25,000 ton volume of business, uh, mm -hmm. if it is growing at 4% every year, Preview will definitely want to maintain a 30 or 35 percent share of dihydromercinol going forward also. So, you know, and where will this uh, increase be uh, sold? It will be definitely sold uh, to all my customers and especially the top 15 of the giants and top 25 global players. In fact, you know, so so that we would want to ensure that we are in a position to keep growing going forward also keep our customers uh, very comfortable and you know uh, treat us as a preferred supplier to them uh, because going forward it's going to be a world of sustainable renewable raw material which is going to be you know a part of any sort of a blend because, uh, this is a uh, this is a law which will start coming around some other countries have already you know uh, taking it very very seriously and uh, uh, it's only time that we'll uh, talk about that uh, by uh, you know following sustainable measures and uh, a renewable raw material is going to be of prime importance and most of the products that we are manufacturing in the pine space are considered as renewable raw material 
and the processes and the technical uh, know-how, uh, the technical know-how that we are adopting, will make us fall under the renewable, uh, you know, raw material sourcing uh, suppliers, and we will be at high demand going forward. In fact. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. The next question from the line of Chintan Modi from Haitong Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, hi, my Chintan question Chintan. is... Yeah, yeah, sir. Good. So my question is with respect to the other expenses going up very sharply during the... Yeah. Yeah, sir. Uh, Hello. The line for current participant is disconnected. A reminder to all participants, you may enter star 1 once again to enter the question queue. The next question from the line of Tanush Mehta from Scantum Wealth. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Uh, firstly, sir, congratulations on a great set of numbers. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, sir, I have uh, like I have a few questions. So, firstly, because of you know uh, in Q3 we had to have a plant shutdown. So, can you quantify like what sales could have been lost during that period? Close to about 80 to 90 crores. Okay, and uh, sir, out of all these facilities that we are having right now. Uh, uh, all of these facilities are zero discharge? Currently, Unit 2 in Mahad and Unit 6 at Jagadia are zero discharge. And oh. the other units, 1, 3, 7, uh, we are oh. progressing towards zero discharge. And we can expect them being zero discharge in a couple of years? Maybe uh, by uh, March 23. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, basically, if, if I was to just, uh, you know, look at uh, the specialty chemicals market when it comes to flavors and fragrances, it's usually seen that uh, a few products, when they hit the market, for example, it's musk or camphor-based, you know, they have a extreme long shelf life and it, and it finds its usage in different kind of products and varieties. Uh -huh. So, so how... You know, so, so how does innovation play a role here? Because whenever a fragrance that, you know, uh, hits the market, it's usually such that the same product volume keeps on increasing and other players make the same product. So how do we differentiate here or what is the key USP we have in this sector? Okay. Uh, the key USP is by... Uh, technical capability to keep upgrading and innovating uh, to manufacture these products uh, to the satisfaction of each of our customers. Because every customer where could possibly be using the same mask, but they may have a purity level also almost on similar lines. But there is a uh, nose perception which is known as node, a high node or a low node or a medium node. So this is something that we are manufacturing and we have been able to, you know, control the temperatures when we are manufacturing this on a continuous basis, knowing what customer requires uh, which particular nodes and so. And uh, uh, so the customers are comfortable uh, with the products that we are uh, manufacturing and delivering it to them. And uh, uh, this could be the only uh, differentiation that uh, Privy has as compared to maybe some of its competitors that uh, have. Because we... we uh, are continuously innovating and improving on the processes and uh, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, technologies uh, that goes into manufacturing uh, some of these bulk aroma chemicals I'm talking about, in fact. And as far as the specialty aroma chemicals is concerned, very few in India are having the technical capability to manufacture the specialty aroma chemicals. Most of the specialty aroma chemicals from some uh, some of the overseas competitors that we are having, and the overseas competitors who are having an Indian arm, in fact, you know. So there, the competition is purely on the uh, technical front and how we are able to surpass on uh, do an edge as compared to some of our competitors. So beyond that, even I can't uh, really visualize uh, as to what would be a better answer than uh, you know 
that the product uh, quality that we deliver to them you know? yeah i understand so so is 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 the pricing you know when we talk about the when we come to pricing uh, because everything boils down to that so our pricing is as competitive as that of the market in spite of uh, you know having uh, a better uh, quality than them or how does our pricing go like on a like to like basis absolutely okay so on a like to like uh, basis you know how we uh, uh, still continue to be uh, 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 an indian company and i am very proud of it however some of the global players still feel that you know uh, we are not uh, possibly uh, white skinned uh, so some of my global competition or competitors uh, they still have an edge as far as the pricing is concerned but that gap has uh, definitely come down what it was about 10 15 years ago and what it is today and i am in a position to uh, get maybe a premium as compared to some other chinese players who are uh, uh, selling or uh, competing with us in fact on uh, especially the uh, pine based uh, uh, space that we are uh, operating on in fact okay uh and sir uh, just a last question uh so you know we said in the recent comments you spoke about that you know most of these uh, maybe chinese companies or any any companies into this segment they have you know these spot supplies being a major part of their top line correct advantage of maybe the pricing or inventory or whatever we call it correct uh, so as a part of our revenue sir what is uh, long term contracts as a part of our total revenue i mean is it like our entire sales is based on our uh, you know basically what i want to understand is that out of the current top line that we've done how much would be towards long term contract or how much would be towards spot because then our inventory is also structured in that manner okay uh broadly uh, see the long term contracts are only with the global mnc players uh, you know even a, a company in india like uh, the sh kilkar or uh, uh, oriental now known as camfer you know so they though they are competitors but they are actually my main customers main indian customers also in fact you know mm-hmm. and of course a host of other companies in india so no indian company believes in giving long term contracts so they all believe in po based monthly or quarterly requirements or bi monthly requirements so the global players are the ones who enter into long term contracts um 80% of the major global players go in for annual contracts about 5 or 10% go for uh, quarterly and about 5 to 10% go for the half yearly contracts so contracts i now face the account for about 65 to 70% of my revenue so when we are formulating a budget we ensure that you know uh, all the main uh, uh, products that we are into and on the pine space either you know, this can even go as i as maybe about 80 85% it fact you know uh, so okay. that uh, uh, the bulk of the volume of the pine and on the phenol if i am able to contract to the top 30 players of the world uh, it gives me a great sense of relief to know that uh, my uh, uh, annual budget for the next year will definitely be uh, met or surpassed uh because then i'm only left to a very uh, limited number on the spot on the main products and as far as the speciality and the other uh, 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 products are concerned in fact you know having a very less competition or you know uh, we being one of the better uh, players in this uh, uh, specialty chemical definitely we will be in a position to sell uh, uh, even in the spot market if we don't have too much of long term contracts so having said that uh, uh, you know for cont- uh, the this year also uh, we are fairly insulated ourselves uh, to ensure that uh, the number that i just talked about have been contracted oh. with all my uh, uh, 15 to 20 uh, uh, major global uh, uh, players of the world at that okay and i yeah uh, if i could just squeeze in on another uh, question sorry to interrupt uh, mr mehta may we request that you return to the question queue for follow up questions yeah yeah okay and sir uh, all the best for the coming quarters and hope that you achieve 3000 crores top line before you start the trade thank you very much thank you ladies and gentlemen in order to ensure that the management will be able to address questions from all participants please limit your questions to two per participant If you have a follow-up question, please rejoin the queue. The next question from the line of Chintan Modi from Hytong Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi sir. So 
the question that i was asking was with respect to the other expenses uh, whether there was any one off in that uh, during the quarter because if when we look at sequentially we have grown the sales by almost 95 crores and we haven't seen any operating leverage benefits slowing down mm-hmm. so you're only talking about the other expenses increase in this particular quarter yeah, or yeah. yes yeah? sir Yes. And, uh, this other expenses increase in this quarter is uh, on account of the phenomenal increase in the coal cost because in other expenses you find the uh, uh, the operating expenses of uh, uh, electricity coal uh, for you know for generating the steam uh, so coal cost has uh, shot up from about 7 or 8 rupees to you know uh, close to 16 and 17 rupees the bulk of it was also purchased at 13 and 14 and 15 and 16 and uh, coal forms a very important part of a raw material for me because i require steam in all my products uh, steam is a integral part of a, a, a you know a, a input to uh, do my distillations or to do my chemical processes because without steam i will not be in a position to do any sort of a chemical reaction so the uh, the the power cost in this particular uh, quarter has been uh, uh, you know over the roof uh, so that's one major uh, increase an increase of close to about 3 and a half 4 crores in this quarter itself i have spent on power uh, that is on coal cost the second increase has been further increase in the uh, freight expenses on the export freight what you are not able to see is the freight expenditure on the rnc which is actually coming as a part of the cost of raw material consumed and that also is a part mainly contributing to the increase in the rnc cost but here in the other expenses you have uh, export freight and uh, you know selling and distribution expenses where if i had to compare on the june quarter because september quarter could be uh, uh, a missed number because the volumes were not there so if i compare on june quarter or the up to the september quarter rates you know this quarter further there has been a deterioration in the rates on the uh, export freight and export freight has jumped up by another 15 odd percent from the rates that was we were giving in september and close to about 22 percent increase from the rates that we were giving in june because we had previously believed that you know it is customer who comes first and uh, we would go all out to ensure that the products reach my customers on time every time and for which we don't mind even paying a little bit of extra expenses on uh, the freight this we have absorbed it in the uh, second and third quarter uh, but uh, you know having delivered the products to my customers uh, on time uh, most of the customers have ensured that there is an increase uh, they have also allowed us an increase in the freight expenses uh, when we are quoted for the calendar year 22 uh, many of them have also you know uh, agreed to uh foot the bill on the increased freight expenditure okay sir got it so and second question uh with with respect to the mix between exports and domestic uh, whether there was any change with respect to that mix uh, compared to our normal mix or it remain largely the same and any no, no, no. specific it, trends that you could highlight in terms of the various geographies which are picking up no sir uh, mostly it is all almost on the same lines uh, there is not much of any change in the geography situation also and uh, europe continues to be my major customer uh, followed by india and uh, us is also a very very important market for us almost contributing about 16 or 20% of the thing so markets are almost same in fact you know okay sure and just one last one that for next year considering all the price hikes and that uh, we have taken uh, can we assume the or uh, you know ebitda margins to come back to the your you know you have been guiding like you know between 17 to 20% kind of an ebitda margin range uh, sure. can we expect it to bounce back to those levels absolutely oh okay fine sir thank you sir that's what very helpful thank you chintan all the best thank you the next question from the line of amar moria from alpha accurate advisors please go ahead Yeah. So thanks a lot for the opportunity again. Sir, so just to understand a little bit on this other income, as you were indicating that this other income large quantum is basically a kind of operating uh, operating income. So how much percentage of this ten crore would be like a kind of a operating income we can consider? Ten crore ninety six lakh forty eight thousand four forty five. Okay. So this large part is like a operating income only. Absolutely. And. yeah and secondly sir like you know just to understand as you indicated like you know 
three thousand crore kind of a revenue in let's say two and a half to three years. So is it like uh, this will be more front ended? Let's say considering twenty three will be the first year, or it will be more back ended kind of thing like you know uh, coming in second or third year. No, I'm not. I'm not able to follow your question. So, so basically, what I'm saying here is that reaching the three thousand crore mark, let's say in next three years, yeah. right? So, largely, uh, let's say we will be closing the year at let's say around whatever number, and assuming that twenty three will be the first year, twenty four will be yeah, the second absolutely. year. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, okay. So, uh, so what you are suggesting is, uh, yeah, uh, uh, about two two and a half years from now. That's that's yeah. correct. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically, is it like linear kind of a number, or like because you know, as you said that first year will be like a forty percent kind of a uh, you know utilization for the expanded capacity and the uh, new capacity. Let's say speciality will pick up also in the second half. So, so is it like the second year would be uh, a normalized growth year, or because you know because when I divide this number into three years, basically we see a very hyper growth in your company. you can expect that so you know if we have spent a uh, uh, huge amount you know <laughs> you should expect that sort of a growth also because this money what we have spent has to give me the uh, returns also otherwise we are not uh, interested in spending such 500 or 600 crores and ensure that we don't grow right okay because then you know you are just talking about more than uh, 25% 26% growth every year basically possibly yes you have seen previ growing at a cagr of about 20 22% even the last 10 12 years broadly so here we are talking about and those time you know we were not uh, uh, embarking upon such ambitious projects as uh, uh, we are now doing around and of course our bandwidth has also improved uh, we have good investors like you we are good very good bankers who are ready to you know possibly fund us we had some good set of uh, in uh, private equity investors who have also helped us in this uh, journey so i really feel that you know growing at possibly anywhere between 22 and 27% on a yearly basis should not be a difficulty there have been some bad years because you know the uh, the prices on uh, uh, some of the aroma chemicals uh, fell uh, very very low uh, so with uh, markets uh, realizing that what should be the correct value of uh, the Uh, the most of the uh, aroma chemicals and the specialty chemicals i do believe some of these will come from price escalations and most of it will come from the expansion that we are doing uh, on our capacities the new products as well as going forward some of the uh, uh, existing products uh, where we as i have been uh, and as we in previ keep saying that uh, it is our zeal and focus to ensure that we maintain our market share on all the top 5 uh, products as well as on the two phenol products at jagadia we would like to maintain the market share and if that keeps happening around uh, 3000 crores in the next 2 uh, uh, to 3 years uh, should be uh, definitely achievable thank you sir thanks a lot best of luck for the future thank you very much thank you the next question from the line of rohit nagraj from mk global please go ahead yeah uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congrats on a very good set of numbers thanks for it uh, yeah uh, so the first question is uh, probably it might be a basic question and uh, since i'm attending the call for the first time uh, we have said about 3000 crores of top line uh, how are we placed uh, from the business development uh, team point of view uh, for both our domestic as well as overseas markets i mean have we expand with the team we are currently in terms of expansion and how are we placed from that perspective thank you okay uh you know uh, we are not a b2c company we continue to be a b2b company prima facie so that's the reason that we may not require too much of people at the uh, uh, the uh, marketing or the business development level how uh, having said that there are two uh, uh, the new product that is now going to come about camphor so camphor is a product which is more uh, indianized i will say that it is you know uh, camphor has got a huge amount of uh, relevance uh, religiously uh, and uh, possibly even pharmaceutical wise also it right, for medicinally wise also and india is a huge consumer of camphor i do believe that uh, 
we may have to possibly you know uh, look at selling camphor a little differently uh, than what we have been selling on the uh, aroma chemical uh, other aroma chemicals per se in fact you know so that's a strategy that we have uh, you know already evolved at the company level and our marketing uh, our business development people at the business development team has uh, uh, you know really strengthened up themselves uh, to ensure to enter into the camphor market with all the zeal uh, as much as they have been doing on all the other products so that's the only change that will require how to sell camphor because this could this will not be a, a sale that can happen at a 60 day credit or a 90 day credit as you know most of the camphor manufacturers are in a position to sell this maybe across the counter in a 7 day or a 10 day 15 day 30 day you know uh, i think uh, not beyond 30 day uh, credit period not ma many manufacturers are offering today in fact you know so those could be some other changes that we are gearing up internally in our company also and uh, as far as uh, the uh, uh, the people and the you know the structure per se uh, for achieving uh, uh, almost uh, double the sale uh, that we will be doing in about two to three years time uh, the company already has a good uh, two tires and three tires of uh, 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 top level middle level uh, uh, people all professionally qualified in most of the uh, departments and most of the areas whether it is the you know, starting from my own finance you know, I have a good uh, solid two to three layer uh, uh, people uh, there is a VP finance already in place there is a GM finance uh, in fact and then you have uh, deputy GMs heading each functional head whether it is the uh, banking uh, per se or uh, the taxation per se so so those structures have been put across similarly in the production level uh, each of the uh, uh, you know units are considered as SBUs and above them there is going to be a functional head then you have a VP at uh, the uh, sectional places overall in charge there is also at the very senior level and all this uh, function at business development also you know there is country specific heads then uh, uh, then you have the CRM that is the customer relation managers to most of the strategic and uh, key customers that it is so and then you have the India head so that way those layers are uh, put in place in fact and uh, uh, we do believe that with you know what we have done in the last three four years it should help us really uh, uh, you know um, go ahead and meet the target of uh, uh, 2x preview and possibly beyond that uh, whenever we come out with various launches we should be in a position to handle that sort of a volume at the operational level we will uh, possibly require some new people some new thought process so, so that uh, recruitment keeps happening around and HR is uh, 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 on their toes you know to ensure that those uh, uh, requirements are met uh, as happened in fact right sir uh, that was a really comprehensive reply so just uh, aligning to that uh, in terms of the succession planning from the promoters any thoughts okay uh, uh, as you are aware, we are having two promoters, the Rao family and the Babani family. As far as Mr. The, the Rao family is concerned, uh, his all three sons are in the preview business basically. So one of them is heading the U.S. operations, uh, entire marketing and sourcing and procurement and etc. Uh, uh, his uh, uh, eldest son is uh, uh, already into uh, the technical front. He has been uh, serving preview for almost more than now 15, 20 years. He is uh, basically a chemical engineer and is a part of the uh, production uh, uh, gamut in fact and is uh, 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 the elder son is a, a person who is uh, second in line to the commercial head as of now in fact so so the Rao family is very much into the preview business and uh, the succession has been thought about and the main promoter Mr. Mahesh Babani who is uh, uh, the chairman and MD his eldest daughter is already you know uh, is a, a, a finance professional and she has been uh, into the uh, company's uh, uh, finance and a little bit of the marketing uh, uh, operations etc and she does help us in uh, you know uh, getting an overview of that so training has already been imparted so that the succession planning from Mahesh by uh, uh, you know to pass it on to his eldest daughter Snehal Babani happens around and uh, possibly at the right time a few announcements will also be made up got it uh, that was very helpful the second question is in terms of r and d you explained the process in terms of the number of products and pipeline so generally what are the criteria that are used to screen uh, the new products in terms of 
so market size margins or return ratios competition uh, how do we usually screen on those you know once these are uh, successfully done in the uh, lab as well as pilot testing and uh, we want to go in for uh, commercial excellent question and i'm very happy that someone uh, from the investor fraternity has asked this question like you know we keep talking about r&d 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 a very beautiful question and uh, the answer to that is also you know very interesting uh, uh, our all our new products that we look in at r&d are basically customer driven so uh, as we say that we you know we give a huge importance to most of our customers and uh, ms mahesh babani who takes care of the r&d as well as the marketing in fact you know in his various visits to the customers or in various seminars and conferences across the globe that we attend on the pine space as well as on the aroma chemical space you know the hunt is always that is to what could be the new molecules that uh, previ can manufacture to grow apart from of course growing in the space that we are already into and these ideas culminate from various of the customers across the globe or sometimes it also eliminates comes across from our competitors who try to talk about and look into it so this hunch is uh, picked up from there then a uh, study of the market is done then we come back and try to find out what could be the source ingredient and the technical capabilities that it will be requiring to manufacture such uh, products uh, is it within the so called purview of previ that we are doing it and if not how different it is from uh, previ's own vision of the four main key space that we are into whether it will be possible or not possible sometimes even if it Ladies and gentlemen, the line for management is reconnected. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jacob. And Roid, sorry. Uh, I think uh, the line got disconnected uh, uh, for some reason. In fact, uh, um, can you just so possibly please, tell me tell yeah, yeah. where I was audible for all of you? In fact, you know. Yeah. Uh, you were talking about uh, you get uh, those uh, connects from the customer uh, competition and then you come back and you start uh, working on the drawing board in terms of sourcing the raw material etc absolutely and you know in some cases it is also market driven as i said as as was so in the case of galaxy mask in fact and we uh, first and foremost we do it at our lab scale and the reward that both our r&d centers are recognized by government of india was doing it at the lab and getting a clear picture as to what are the products and uh, what are the ingredients that are uh, going into manufacturing this product we also do a very deep deep study uh, you know deep stick study on with regard to the market for the product how it could be what could be the margins what could be the irr potential uh, uh, market uh, for the product who are our competitors currently how good are their relations with our uh, customers where they are selling it across and how much how many of our customers are ready that you know if at all previ looks at manufacturing these products uh, we shall be in a position to get a share what could be the share that we can look and tap it and uh, finally what could be the growth potential going forward once we enter into this market in the next 3 5 10 15 years so uh, honestly speaking all this is uh, done about a complete irr is done a feasibility study is undertaken uh, 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 a deviation a delta deviation study is also undertaken what if it doesn't happen there is a 10% 5% 15% 20% deviation to what we are thinking about on being a practical and an optimistic guy and then uh, thereafter we go in and look in uh, to invest into this particular uh, capex in fact 
and we have a robust capex committee and we have a beautiful independent board uh, you know where all these uh, projects are put forth uh, the irrs are calculated there is a beautiful discussion that happens around and a consensus is uh, worked around and uh, then only we go ahead and take the step of actually uh, starting spending on money on uh, commercializing a project you know All right, sir. That was really helpful and comprehensive answer. Uh, thanks a lot, and best of luck to you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Rohit. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please limit your questions to one per participant. The next question from the line of Aman Vij from Astute Investment Management. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, my first question is on uh, so when we reach that three thousand crore uh, sales number, what kind of uh, volumes will we be doing, as well as what kind of gross profit we can achieve, gross profit margins? Ah, uh, so volume could be uh, closer to the fifty thousand uh, ton mark. So that's the expansion that we have already put in, and it's uh, going to be there uh, by uh, March two thousand twenty-two. And my existing is around thirty-seven thousand tons, plus and minus ten percent here and there. I think that's what we are looking between forty-seven, forty-eight thousand to fifty-two thousand tons. We should be in a position to touch closer to the three thousand crore mark. And gross margins, I will not get into too much of nitty gritties, but as we have kept repeatedly telling uh, the investors and all of you, you should be looking at a margin anywhere between seventeen and a half to twenty or percent. On the EBITDA level. Sure, sir. If you can briefly talk about, we have four segments: uh, specialty, petrol, phenol, and phenine. Uh, if you can uh, talk about where are the gross margins the highest? If you can give it an order, I'm not asking exact numbers, but uh, so specialty, definitely specialty. The gross margins are the best there. Uh, uh because these are highly high 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 specialty products very less competition so the margins are beautiful uh the second one could be on uh, the uh, on the pine base because we are now backward integrated ourselves so we have isolated ourselves from the vagaries of the chinese and the spot market players so that's going to be by second space the third will be the citral and the sandal base products and last but not the least is the phenol phenol is something which is bulk volume Uh, uh very less of margins in fact and uh, but it is required in every blend so this this is how i could uh, possibly you know uh, tell you how the gross margins work about so just one clarity uh, the three projects which we are doing what is the peak sales we can get in uh, camphor phenol and galaxy mus respectively so if you are able to sell all the three to the its full potential you can expect a sale of anywhere between 700 to 1000 crore uh this is three projects combined sir i'm asking individually if you can give a range i'll have to calculate and possibly you know maybe in my next presentation i'll be ready with that calculation too broadly yeah. if i have to get back into my numbers 4 and 1/2000 tons of camphor average because it all depends as to what sort of a mix i'll be selling the camphor because if i'm going to sell everything on pharma grade my revenue will be different if i'm going to sell something on the ip grade the revenue will be different so i can only possibly tell the mix once i start manufacturing camphor and sell in the market so there could be a trend that you know maybe it's 50% perfumery grade 25% industrial grade 25% pharma grade fine so i know this could be an average so those uh, things are too early today uh, you know for me to really state ki what could be exact turnover of camphor i can only talk about volumes when i'm talking it is 4 and 1/2000 tons of camphor and 4 and 1/2000 tons of galaxomas so the uh, uh, permutation combination will be left as per the demand uh, uh, you know for those products from the market that right? So camphor, if you leave out, what is the peak revenue from Prignol and Galaxy Mus? If you can talk about those things. So I told you it will be eight hundred crores uh, for all three products put together. Okay, sir. Uh, thank you. I'll get back to you. Yeah. Thank you. The next question from the line of Zubri from Monrian Investment Partners. Please go ahead. Hi, Mr. Naran. Thank you very much for this presentation. Uh, one question. Hey, hi, Zubair. Good, good to hear you back. In fact, you know. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, I, I do want to understand, so, you know, we are talking about the 3,000 crores uh, for the next two, three years. I know we discussed uh, some time beyond that. I want to understand that the numbers beyond that figure, does that include mental, or are we talking about mental being an optionality there and the existing utilization of the top five products and the new three products would take you to the numbers beyond uh, 3,000 crores, please? Mental will definitely be in the story uh, beyond 3,000 crore. So as and when it happens, it will happen around. Uh, the initial uh, launch was done on 1st of November. And as, I, as uh, our MD himself stated, and I have personally also spoken to you and many investors, it is at the pilot level. At the research level, we have been able to successfully crack the novel technology that we talked about, and which is also there on our investor presentation. So as and when, it, it takes about five to six months for the pilot to really do a simulation as to what's done in the R&D level, for us to really take the next step, of course, whether we can go ahead and commercialize the so-called technology that we are talking about. So as of now, I may not be in a position to give you too much of details, what is beyond 3,000. So definitely up to 3,000, it's very clear with all the CapEx, with all the expansion that we have done, 3,000 pros looks very much inside, in fact, in the next three years. And just one other thing would be on the other expenses. I know you've discussed, uh, you know, the power and fuel and the freight, which is very understandable. But one thing we see as you've grown, that the other expenses have grown uh, year on year, uh, even as a percentage of your revenue. So that's fine, you know, you've grown. But at what point can we expect a level of operating leverage where we do see, you know, some sort of reduction? Not even if not reduction, but at least that expense uh, flattening out. Or, or do you think the current power and fuel and the forwarding cost, do you think they've peaked? And we expect some normalization as we move into next few quarters and years? And that broader number as a percentage of your revenue in a longer term uh, perspective, please. Uh, uh, okay, uh, you're talking about uh, what could be the idealistic situation of the numbers uh, with regard to the fixed expenditure, uh, you know, mitigating exactly. uh, the exactly. uh, the volume of sales. Yeah, so, you know, uh, it's prima facie, if you see, my fixed expenses actually have not gone up even in this particular quarter. It is the variable expenditure which has shot up in this particular quarter, the quarter that's just gone, the bygone quarter. So whether it has been the fuel or the freight expenses or some of the RMC costs, all this contribute directly to the variable expenditure. The fixed expenses has been very nominal. In fact, it has reduced uh, because there is actually very limited travel uh, happening around because of the pandemic that's going around. The salaries have been frozen for the last one, one and a half years. There's not been too much of a hike uh, within uh, the company, in fact, you know. And uh, most of the expenses are under uh, 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 tight scrutiny. So the budget itself is very, very low. So I, I can only uh, visualize that, you know, going forward from the quarter of January uh, 2022 or, uh, you know, the Q1, uh, for Q4 for Indians and Q1 for you in, based in London, uh, you know, uh, you will see a change in the uh, operating margin uh, because uh, the volumes definitely are going to increase. So is the revenue uh, when I'm talking about. And uh, to also inform all the investors uh, that the sale performance or the revenue performance that Previ has clocked in the third quarter, uh, that is December 31, 2021, is a record, is a record for Previ. Uh, we were not able to do the 400 crore mark and the consolidated one, uh, you know, but however, we are capturing the other income, we are somewhere around 405. But it was a zeal that, you know, we do 400 in this uh, uh, quarter itself. Um, having said that, uh, uh, we should be able to uh, definitely uh, clock much better revenue starting from this uh, quarter downwards uh, from our existing product streams itself and with new products uh, coming in and most of the contracts will start settling from July and bulk of it will start coming from December 2022. I feel uh, Privy is an up for good uh, times and uh, the variable expenses have already been considered while we have gone ahead and taken some of the price escalations from our customers. And spot business, uh, definitely we, we look into what could be the best uh, and how best we can absorb some of these expenses in the spot sales that's happening around. So you will see normalcy getting restored, 
uh, from uh, this quarter itself. And better of it will start coming in from uh, the Q1 of 2022. And just a very quick question on the mix. So would it be 65, 35, uh, 35 fixed and 65 variable cost for you? Uh, overall variable could be about 70% uh, and uh, balance will be fixed. Right? Yeah, so your fixed cost will be about 15%. So your percentage of profit should improve around in Friday. Okay, that's fine. So 70, 30 is the uh, break. Broadly, broadly, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Thank you very much. Appreciate that, Mr. Moran. Thanks, Uber. Thank you. Due to time constraint, that was the last question. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Uh, thank you, all of you investors. Uh, you know, uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you all, talking and interacting with all of you. Uh, I can only say that, you know, uh, uh, previous stands for commitment and deliverables uh, as far as uh, uh, the Aruba chemical space is concerned. Of course, now we have an added uh, responsibility uh, for creating uh, wealth to our investors. But our, our track uh, record and history says that, you know, whoever have been our investors, whether it was privately held or not publicly held, investors have always been happy around because our promoters mean business. Our promoters uh, only talk, uh, you know, uh, sleep, eat, and it's completely passion towards the aroma chemicals. So with uh, such uh, strong focus from the uh, key promoters and a very, very, very strong lineup of uh, the uh, uh, professionals uh, who run this business or who run Privy here, uh, we are in for good times going forward, and the next two, three years looks to be very, very prominent for uh, Privy and all those people who are associated with Privy. So on that front, uh, a great weekend to all of you. Enjoy the uh, balanced day of Friday. And thank you very much. And stay invested in Privy. That's what I'll say. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Asian Market Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. And you may now disconnect your lines. <laughs>